Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data Big Questions. And so today I'm taking in a question from a user that was submitted around Apache Beam and Spark. And so we're going to talk a little bit about streaming analytics and we're going to talk about, you know, what are some of the differences between those? A word of note, if you have a question, put them in the comment section here below. Have your question read. I'll get to them as fast as I can. I'm working through them. Remember, I'm just a one person show right now at this point but I'm working through answering your questions. So thank you for your patience community and find out all about Apache Beam versus Spark right after this. So welcome back. Excited to really talk about this. We haven't talked about Apache Spark since we talked about really breaking it down between okay what's the difference between you know batch and streaming or what's the difference between you know apache you know spark versus Hadoop? so i'm excited to kind of jump back in um, beam is one of those projects that uh, you know i was kind of i started following in the user community not a contributor or anything like that but when it first came out i definitely jumped on and i, I think i still you know i think i am still on the uh, list for the developers or for the users of just kind of seeing what's going on so i've kind of i've kind of been following it for a while not so much a contributor, or any, you know, in any capacity there, but you know, it's one of my tips. If you're interested in, you know, learning more about any of the projects or any, any programs, I encourage you to go out there. You know, most of these, most of the things that we're going to cover on this channel are all open source, and so you can be involved, right? So today's question came in from a user. Um, actually, came in through uh, my website, so thomashinson.com forward slash big questions. So if you have any questions and you don't want to put them in the YouTube section here below, that's fine. You you, you know, you can submit those however you want to get them. Um, asked on the show. So it says, hi, I want to know the advantage of Apache Beam using Google Dataflow. Pretty cool. Which I know is Google is Google's own cloud runner for Beam versus Spark. Spark is used a lot, but it will definitely involve setting up and maintaining clusters. If we're having relatively simpler ETLs and simple simpler transformation, then Google Dataflow is better and a cheaper option compared to Spark as it's serverless. So that's a good question. Um, I, I'm going to answer that question as best I can. I will say um, I'm just now getting into looking into GCP. So, you know, we'll have more of a background um, in Azure a little bit more recently, actually, in uh, AWS. So I'm a little more comfortable with, uh, you know, in doing that part. But GCP is definitely on my radar. So, uh, you know, I've looked, I've looked at it and it's actually probably on my list to maybe try to knock out one of the certifications at some point, maybe do a video on it. But let's talk a little bit about Apache Spark versus Apache Beam. So Spark, if you don't know, like I said, I've covered it in a video before. Spark is an in-memory processing engine, right? It's one of the most popular, um, it still may be at this time, one of the most highly contributed uh, big data ecosystem projects out there. Uh, it's it's widely used for streaming analytics. It really bursts burst on the scene. Uh, if you go to their website, I think, you know, it, it boasts for map, you know, for, for people that are still doing MapReduce, there's, there's not a lot out there, MapReduce 2 even. But uh, Spark was one of the ones that came through and said, hey man, we can speed up your processing, you know, compared to MapReduce 1 by 100 times. So really fast, really blazing fast for that. Um, you know, kind of seen as the streaming answer, right? So if you think about batch versus streaming, you know, streaming is the ability to take this continuous, you know, continuous data as it comes in versus batch is like, hey, we know, we, we know all the results, we know everything that's coming in, we're now going to run this process, and it's going to go. So the way I think about batches, think of, you know, things that you already know, like quarterly reports or sales, or figures like that. Where streaming is, we don't know how many results we're going to get. And honestly, this is kind of where Beam starts to come in. These results may come in unordered too. And so Spark, seen as streaming analytics, really, really good processing engine. There were a lot of really cool um, ways to integrate with it too. That was that was another cool thing. So, you know, for, for my people out there that always asking about, okay, what can I do? Do I have to know Java? You know, Spark gives you the ability to do Scala, Python. Um, you can still do Java, right? And um, then also um, you can do uh, Spark SQL. So there are some really cool things, really, really easy ways. And that's probably why the community's uh, grown so much. Uh, just the blazing speed for it. Like I said, um, not only when we're talking about streaming, but hey, if I can speed up, if I can speed up even my batch jobs, why wouldn't I do it there too? So um, been around for a while, like I said, a lot of, a lot of contributors. But then next there was Beam, right? And so Beam, I wanna say the last two years is kind of maybe, maybe three years have been in, involved. Um, with just following it, like 
like we were talking about, you know, I was really excited it when it first came out, you know, pre pre two days, uh, it was it was seen as kind of a competitor more to uh, Spark, and they, what they were trying to do is make it truly batch and streaming platform. So make one one platform, and they really focused on being able to do the out of sequence reads. So when you think of out of sequence reads, think about you know from a streaming analytic right. We don't know how many results are coming in, and all these results. Hey, you know, a result to a data center in America from Australia. There's going to be some latency, right? And so, you know, you, you even think about latency from distance versus, you know, even just, hey, what about what about some of these edge devices that are in an unconnected state and come back connected? How do you process all those results, right? If there's if there's a latency in 30 seconds where you're streaming it, you know, how how, how do you how do you handle that whenever you're you're starting to think and you know where where Apache Spark was at the time, they were more in the micro batch. So they would take your results and they still kind of batched it, but they were doing it in small little segments. That's 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 since been been kind of uh, you know take, taken aback, and you know Sparks Sparks gone more down the streaming with Spark streaming and some of, some of the other pieces. But I'm just giving you a little bit of history around Apache Beam. All that being said, too, Apache Beam now has kind of gone forward and they're doing more of the data pipeline. So they're given you know given given the ability to. You know, take the data and be able to exchange and still be able to run, you know, something on Flink or something on uh, Spark. So you can you can use a Spark runner that'll be your processing engine, and Apache Beam is just that pipeline that gives you the ability to do that. So Spark, um, the company that incubated incubated it, Databricks, Apache Beam probably guessed it from the question, but it's a Google Google based project. So just like TensorFlow. It was incubated out of Google, and now it's being integrated uh, uh, heavily inside of GCP. And so the question, so rolling back to the question, so that's what Apache Beam is, that's what Apache Spark is, and those are kind of some of the differences. You know, like I said, now with Apache Beam, you can kind of create these pipelines for your data to be able to, you know, execute on a Spark runner or some other some other kind of processing engine. So the question comes in around, okay, what are some of the advantages of using Apache Beam or Spark as far as Google data flow. And so kind of what I've looked at, it breaks down into two different ways. You can do your data proc or you can do a data flow. And so when we think about what data flow is, data flow is just a serverless, you know, a serverless way to be able to process your data, right? So it's it's when you when you want to be able to, you know, have data that's on demand. So when you whenever I would approach the way that I would approach this problem is I would look at it as okay, do I need persistent data, right? Do I need a traditional Hey, you know, I've always got some data that I want to process. I want a persistent state. I want, I want that, I want that dedicated system so that I can continually process. Cause maybe it's just not a one-off, right? So if it's like a one-off job where, you know, that may not run all the time, you may not always have the data or need, need to do it, then you can probably do it in a server, in a serverless architecture. But if it's something where you have a lot of different jobs where a lot of customers do, where, hey, you know, I've got different different processes and different jobs that are going on at different times, you probably want to have that dedicated system. So it's going to roll back to your use case, and that's the way that I would approach it. Okay, do I want to, from an architectural perspective, do I want to create this in a serverless architecture? You know, is it is it infrequent data? Is it, you know, is it data that's not continually streaming in? You know, or is it something that can, you know, run run at different random times whenever we have the data sets? Then maybe I want to go the serverless route. But is it part of an ecosystem, right? Is it, you know, do other jobs depend on it? You know, do I, do I already have other, other jobs as well that are running that I want that dedicated system? And that's kind of how I would approach it, right? I mean, and you know, like you were saying, you're going to get a lot, you know, out of the box functionality for some of the simpler use cases to be able to do it. But as it gets more complex, that's when you'll want to be, you know, want to use something probably that's not just the templates of the data flow and some of the other managers. So it's going to, it's going to depend on how complex it is, right? Is it, is it just some semi-structured data that you can do, you know, some, some, some kind of simple uh, ETL on and then, and push it in, or is it something pretty complex where we're overlaying different, different data sources, right? And so that's, that's kind of how I would approach it. So without knowing too much more about your use case, uh, that's that that's the way that I would look at it and I would approach it that's all for today so I want to thank everyone if uh, you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel here and make sure that you never miss an episode and I'll see you next time on big data big questions